Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So from today, I'm going to start a new series called as Career Connect, wherein I would be interviewing industry experts all over the world. So the main aim of this series is to help students who are migrating abroad and who are trying to prepare for interviews. So, so today we have Ganesh with us. Hi, Ganesh. Hi. Yeah. Uh, so this is our first episode and I'm totally excited for it. So uh, Ganesh, can you tell me more about yourself, about your entire journey in your career? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, for Thanks for tuning in today. Uh, I'm truly honored to be a guest on uh, this you this like a talk show and I want to express my sincere gratitude for inviting me to join here. Uh, actually, <laughs> uh, and I have a history of collaboration, uh, especially during the process of um, publishing my Ansible book. I can express my, how much I appreciate your dedication and the fantastic uh, teamwork. Thanks. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, just heads up, uh, what I'm sharing uh, here is from my own experience and doesn't reflect <laughs> my employer's viewpoint. Okay, my name is Ganesh. Uh, so basically, I'm a Linux engineer, but now I turn as a kind of automation consultant. Uh, so uh, mostly I focus on Ansible, uh, OpenShift, Kubernetes kind of technology. Uh, it's because of my interest and also I, because of my professional role. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm based in Singapore this time, and um, yeah, that's a high level of things. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Uh, so since you have a very rich experience of more than a decade, uh, can you tell me how uh, a work day in your life looks like? Yeah, sure. Mm, okay. Usually I start my day with a focus on customer projects mm -hmm. because these are all that offers great uh, deal of variety of excitement and headaches. <laughs> I'm <laughs> part of the <laughs> professional services team in uh, in my company. Um, essentially, I'm working to assist uh, the pre-sales and sales team and also the, our professional services team, uh, especially when it comes to crafting solutions for our customers. Um, yeah, we, we, we are working on these projects mainly. Uh, once a project is in the pipeline, for example, mm -hmm. we got some kind of a discussion deals, some kind of a potential um, deal, then I take care of the design phase and I help the team to uh, team with like a technical details. So this includes um, two critical aspects. One is the architectural and the development design. Mm -hmm. Then the basically the architectural design involves like structuring the project to align with um, customers specific objectives. Uh, in the development uh, design phase, we create a detailed blueprint for the technical implementation. So once we have the design phase, uh, I mean, once we got the project, uh, we transition to the implementation of the projects. So it's like a more like a hands-on implementation uh, where we put our design into action, like implementing the solution, developing the maybe automation playbooks and so on. Uh, once the project is complete, yeah, usually it's like we will hand over to the customer, like it's a smooth kind of to ensure, okay, they can use the solution, making sure that the solution functions uh, as intended and meets their expectation. So that's a high level. Um, then, yeah, that's a day-to-day -day life. Then in addition to the project specific thing, I would like it uh, time to stay updated to the latest technology because that's important and also the product developments, because it's essential to uh, be aware of the newest features mm -hmm. and the details of our products, as well as the other, other products in the market, similar products, competitor, or whatever it is. Um, maybe I can add this. Furthermore, I dedicated some of my time uh, to conducting the POCs, proof of concepts, mm -hmm. uh, because these POCs allow me to simulate and understand the actual challenges and or the problems customers are facing or users are facing in the community, then identify the best possible solution. So I can try multiple times and find the best. And usually I write it some blocks <laughs> and that's how I do. Yeah, it's kind of a dynamic fulfilling mm -hmm. role um, where every day presents new challenges, opportunities for learning kind of thing. Yeah, that's a, yeah. I think it's long, but yeah, it's a short. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. The The day looks pretty exciting. So yeah. when you spoke about the current trends, 
so in 2023 or maybe one or two years down the line what do you think uh, would be the trending tools and technologies uh, in the market and what should students study okay uh, that's a good question thanks for that um yeah you are absolutely right there are several exciting trends in the world of automation especially automation um let me highlight a few first and foremost the widespread influence of artificial intelligence or ai is is, is a hard to ignore actually uh, in the context of ansible uh, we are witnessing the emergence of ansible light speed mm. uh, which is uh, poised to a game changer of course i, I I'm, I'm sure that so ansible light speed essentially um, uh, acts as an ai powered core developer if you know the github kind of code developer is similar to that but it's just ansible focused one not any other language or all and it's leveraging the ibm watson code assistant in the backend mm -hmm. so this innovative feature assists um, ansible playbook developers by suggesting well written content uh, with the best practices so like when you when you get the code or suggestion from the ansible light speed that means it's 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 safe to use in the production you don't need to worry about the syntax error or linting and also, uh, it's all about speeding up the development process. You don't need to type a lot. You, mm -hmm. you type something, then it will suggest you the things. So that's the AI part. The Another important thing is the introduction of uh, event-driven and symbol or event-driven automation. This feature has been like uh, eagerly anticipated by users, and it's gaining popularity very quickly, actually. The community's active involvement, we can see that involvement now. Uh, they are contributing a lot of event source plugins. So events are like, we are already familiar with the events. We have a security events, logging events, users are logging, many things are happening. It can be attack, it can be normal activity, we don't know. So we have systems in place to detect these events. But when you detect, you need someone to go and fix the issue. So it can be like someone is trying to attack some specific IP address kind of thing. So even driven Ansible, the possibilities are like nearly limitless. You can automate a wide range of operations uh, based on the events, like bringing in a new era of almost hands-free or zero test automation, I, I call. For example, you can trigger actions like um, blocking IP address when an attack is detected or initiate a uh, file cleanup or housekeeping job when the disk space is full for the computer or even automate the scaling of your application or even cluster nodes based on the real-time traffic data, it's, 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 it will be a great help for the automated operations. Um, that's the two things I can say then. Um, additionally, we have seen this um, significant um, kind of evolution of the NetOps, SecOps, ChatOps, several things. So mm -hmm. the network and security operations are um, becoming increasingly like automated with the primary goal of reducing the human error because if someone changed something in a wrong way, gone. Yeah. The bank outage, we know the experience, right? So these kind of things will happen. So they want to reduce the human error. And also they want to speed up the implementation instead of one week, they want to do in one hour. Mm -hmm. So this trend is being adopted by the organization uh, across various sectors. It can be public business, banking, finance, we can see that. It's like a very impressive actually. Yeah, it's an exciting time to be part of the automation landscape. I can say that. Mm -hmm. yeah that's amazing um so uh, do you interview candidates uh not really <laughs> very very <laughs> rarely, uh, nowadays yeah okay so like if you were to interview a candidate um so what qualities or like what are those things that you look in uh, the the student okay um, okay first and foremost <laughs> i would like to clarify that i am not currently involved in any hiring activities However, if I were be the one making these hiring decisions or influencing, so I would consider some of the kind of essential qualities or the skills from the candidate. First thing, the candidate should have a strong grasp on the core concepts of the related technology uh, they are working on. For example, if it's sensible, for example, sensible, mm -hmm. they should understand the fundamental concepts or the principles. Uh, equally important is that their ability to understand the objectives and the uh, kind of they should be able to uh, 
understand and realize, okay, what customer is trying to resolve? What is our objective? What is the problem we are solving? Yeah. So they should be able to understand this instead of just writing the playbook or write, writing some code. They need to know, okay, it's not just a button or they changing something. We have a final objective. It can be an application, it can be something. So usually we look for these kind of skills. And why it's not necessary to have um, in-depth knowledge of every aspect they are automating, like they can automate firewall, security devices, Windows, Linux, it can be anything, but it's not mandatory that they should be the subject matter expert, but having a solid foundation in Linux operating system can be incredibly beneficial because it facilitates the development of uh, automation content and they can enhance their problem solving capabilities or the skills. So I value candidates um, who, who also exhibits um, kind of a, um, you know, the genuine willingness to learn without mm -hmm. ego <laughs> and readiness to share their knowledge with um, others. The, it can be yeah. collaborative, it can be the teammates, it can be uh, our um, community, maybe users, we don't know. Uh, because the collaboration is a vital uh, aspect of any team. And I believe it's crucial that team members are open, should be open to both learning from someone also they should be able to teach their colleagues and other members uh yeah that's it actually so the remaining knowledge let's say we have we have millions of technology the remaining knowledge including the familiarity with the latest technologies this can be acquired as a candidate once they settle into the role so it's not that big thing yeah usually yeah that's my thought <laughs> yeah that's wonderful um, so if you were to give advice to uh, new students or people who have migrated to other countries and who are looking out for jobs, so what advice would you give them? Okay, <laughs> certainly instead of just giving <laughs> one advice, I can share something. Yeah. It's not advice, just based on my experiences. Uh, first, it's essentially, uh, it's like a very essential to stay open uh, to learn. Uh, they mm -hmm. should be like this they should they should feel like okay this is something i need to learn not like okay i know this already uh, don't mm -hmm. be like that uh, be receptive to the insights from various uh, or variety of sources not just the recognized as experts okay he's the teacher he's sme i only listen to him no should not it won't be good mm -hmm. uh, because the valuable knowledge can come from unexpected sources it can come from, we don't know, okay, maybe the junior guy, he knows better than the senior guy because he, that's a difference. So uh, that's important. And I personally credit a significant part of my learning to the power of community, the community learning. Because engaging in forums, uh, chat groups, taking part in the discussion with like-minded individuals has been incredibly valuable. Because the real world problems and practical use cases often um, comes with this kind of discussion during the this kind of discussion. So I try to understand these challenges. So if someone asks some question, I am trying to do this, or I'm trying to do this kind of thing, then I try to understand the situation. Mm. If it's something interested, if something I don't know, I will try to simulate that in my lab, okay, in, in my environment. And if I find the answer, if I find it's good, and I will share it with the uh, guy, I mean, whoever asked the question, because it's beneficial for everyone. They learn and I also learn. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, okay, this is the best way because you don't get these kind of things from the doc because it's, doc it's not documented anywhere. So when you have a problem, similar problem next time, you know the answer already. Then um, another, I don't know it's a tip, but it's like a, we don't under underestimate the value of community meetups and the technology events, because they provide unique opportunity for um, hands-on experience, um, also networking. Then they also offer the real world problems because we cannot publish everything on the internet mm -hmm. because it, it might be their working environment or banking, we don't know, because there will be NDAs, there are security issues. But when they share in the meetups, okay, we are doing this in this way, it's like uh, you are getting something knowledge. It's not readily available on internet. No documentation, no blogs. It's from the expert. So it's from the guy who already implemented it. Mm -hmm. So these are important. I can see may, the meetups. I mean, many are interested. I don't know. Uh, 
it's it's really helpful and you can really ask the questions and clarify before you leave the room mm -hmm. so that's the important thing then the last one it's very important nowadays we don't have any read and learn technologies mm -hmm. not not anymore most of the new technologies are like you have to do and learn yeah. because you will forget within one or two days or even week you will learn it. Mm -hmm. so yeah that's a thing but when i say this most of the time i get the question whatever the work-life balance mm -hmm. <laughs> learning mm -hmm um that's a truth if there is no work there is no work-life balance so <laughs> we have to be very careful on that one yeah um i hope this helps a lot of students who are migrating to other countries and uh, who are looking out for jobs um i very well know how difficult uh, the journey of a student is when they are giving like constant interviews they are getting rejections so uh, i i really hope that these uh, these pointers and these advices would uh, help them and uh, like few months down the line we can do some meetup wherein uh, all the yeah. students can definitely ask you questions and uh, get their queries resolved yeah sure yeah thank you so much Ganesh for your time and uh, thank you so much for like kick starting my uh, new series called as career connect uh, I hope to connect with you soon uh, for other videos as well Sure, sure. Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to extend my head. Well, thanks once again, SSV, um, for having me as the guest. Uh, hopefully, um, yeah, thanks for watching. Yeah. <laughs> and if uh, any one of you all want to connect with Ganesh, uh, I'll link his LinkedIn uh, profile and his top mate link in the description box below. Uh, do connect with him if you have any queries regarding Ansible. Uh, sure. Thank you so much for watching the video and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.